Hello friends, welcome to Health Vizac, Medical Concept Simplified. In this video, we will learn about ventilator basics. Ventilators are mechanical life support devices that assist in breathing in conditions where lungs fail to do so. They help in keeping the airway open, prevents collapse of alveolis, and perform basic lung function of delivering oxygen and removing carbon dioxide from the body. The process or treatment approach is termed as mechanical ventilation. Decision of mechanical ventilation is critical and is taken through various factors including patient's clinical history, symptoms and presentation, GCS and ABG test. This step helps in deciding the type of mechanical ventilation patient needs. Indication of mechanical ventilation includes acute hypoxemic respiratory failure with PaO2 less than 50, high work of breathing, respiratory fatigue or use of accessory muscles, cardiorespiratory arrest or shock, respiratory acidosis with PaCO2 of more than 50, airway obstruction, flyel chest and poor GCS that is inability to protect airway. One of the most important indications for mechanical ventilation is respiratory failure. If you want to know more about respiratory failure, please click on the i button at the right top corner of the screen or click the link given in the description box. Mechanical ventilation is generally of two types that is invasive and non-invasive ventilation. In invasive ventilation, patient is connected to ventilator through endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube. Endotracheal intubation is putting an artificial tube in trachea via mouth, whereas tracheostomy is putting a tube in trachea through an artificial opening created in the neck. Non-invasive ventilation is done either via ventilators or BiPAP or CPAP machines. This is done via vented or non-vented face mask in awake patients with spontaneous breathing or via endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube in patients where weaning is attempted. Invasive mode of ventilation is further subdivided into following categories. Assist or control mode, dual mode, SIMV mode or synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation, support mode and some machines have specific advanced modes. Assist or control mode comprises of volume control ventilation and pressure control ventilation. Dual mode comprises of pressure regulated volume control. SIMV mode comprises of volume control plus pressure support mode, pressure control plus pressure support mode and pressure regulated volume control plus pressure support mode. Similarly, support mode comprises of volume support ventilation and pressure support ventilation. Advanced mode that is specific to some machines only comprises of bivent, NAVA mode that is neurally adjusted ventilatory assist and APRV mode that is airway pressure release ventilation. Non-invasive mode of ventilation is further subdivided into pressure support, pressure control and advanced modes. Pressure support modes comprises of BiPAP or CPAP mode whereas advanced modes that are present in specific machines only comprises of NIV NAVA or AVAPS plus mode that is average volume assured pressure support mode. Now let's have a look at the screen of the ventilator. The screen of the ventilator usually have three working areas depending upon the values or parameters they reflect. First is the settings area where we enter the values that we decide for the patient. Second is the patient area where we can see the values or parameters generated by the patient or the values that patient is actually getting. And third is the waveform area. Apart from this, the top of the screen shows us the active mode of ventilation and any alarms triggered by the ventilator. Now let's have a look at some of the basic terminologies that we use or we see on the ventilator. First is VT or the tidal volume. Tidal volume is the volume of air delivered per breath by the ventilator. It is usually set in the range of 6 to 8 ml per kg of idle body weight of the patient. Next is frequency. Frequency is the number of breaths delivered per minute by the ventilator. It is usually set in the range of 12 to 20 per minute. But this value may vary depending upon the condition of patient and the ABG report. Next is PEEP or positive end expiratory pressure which is a small end expiratory pressure which helps to prevent the alveolar collapse. Normally it is set in the range of 5 to 8 cm of water but its value may vary depending upon the lung condition and the underlying pathophysiology of the disease. Next is maximum and minimum pressure settings. 
it is the pressure range used by the ventilator to deliver the desired tidal volume. This may vary as per lung compliance and resistance. It is usually set between the range of 5 to 50 centimeters of water. Next is rise time, which is the time with which airway pressure builds towards a maximum set value. Usually it is set between 100 to 600 milliseconds. Next is inspiratory trigger. Inspiratory trigger is the level of effort from the patient needed to trigger the ventilator to deliver a breath from the ventilator. It may either be flow or pressure triggered and if not then it's time triggered. Normal pressure sensitivity trigger ranges between minus 0.5 to minus 2 cm of water whereas normal flow sensitivity trigger ranges between 1 to 3 liters per minute. Next is FiO2 or fraction of inspired oxygen. It is the amount of oxygen ventilator delivers and is usually expressed as a percentage. It is usually started with 100% and gradually tapered to 40% or room air depending upon the clinical condition of the patient and the ABG test. Next is IE ratio or inspiratory is to expiratory time ratio. It is the proportion of each breath cycle devoted to the inspiratory and expiratory phases. It is usually set between 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 5 but this ratio may be inverted in case of some specific conditions like ARDS in which inverse ratio ventilations are used where this value may be 2 is to 1 or depending upon the condition of the patient. Next is TVE or the end tidal volume. It is the amount of the air returned to the ventilator during the patient's exhalation phase. Next is patient frequency which is the number of breath patient is actually getting or generating. It is usually same as the set frequency if the patient is sedated but this may change if the patient is awake or it's in weaning mode or off sedation mode. Next is PIP or peak inspiratory pressure. It is the highest pressure applied by the ventilator to the lungs during inhalation phase to achieve the set tidal volume. Its normal value should be up to 20 cm of water. Raised inspiratory pressure also indicates obstruction of the airway or obstruction of the ventilatory circuit which may be due to mucus plug or if the patient is conscious and actually biting the endotracheal tube then it may also cause a rise in the inspiratory pressure. Next is MV or minute ventilation which is the sum of tidal volume and respiratory rate. Normally its value is between 4 to 6 liters per minute. Next is T pause or pause time. It is the phase between the inspiration and expiration that enhances the gas exchange. It is usually set between 0 to 20 percent of the breath cycle or 0 to 0 0.4 seconds. These were some of the terminologies that are used in the ventilator. So friends, this brings us to the end of this topic. Hope you find this information valuable and applicable in your clinical practice. Please do like and share this video and hit the bell icon for the latest videos. Do follow our Facebook and Instagram handles for more clinical insights. And for more such informational videos on medical topics, please subscribe to YouTube channel Health Wisec. Medical Concepts Simplified. Thank you.